I would uh, like to dedicate this to a very good friend of mine uh, who's just started chemotherapy today. Welcome, my friends, to this cathedral of science, this pantheon of promise. Tonight we have come to paint on the easel of silence that hangs in this bastion of knowledge. The Solvay conferences are held in these buildings, esteemed scientists gathering to usher in eras of progress. This evening is a nod to them, if ever they thought we hadn't noticed. Marie Curie and Einstein graced these walls, and in their honor tonight, we shall shake these walls. Einstein once said, the unthinking respect for authority is the greatest enemy of truth. Certainly when systems of power can only lie about our reality, they are practically threading a noose. And it is you and I who suffer for not speaking louder about these crimes, even though we have all seen the proof. That others are speaking on your behalf is nothing short an awful excuse. I would add to Einstein's words that we must speak the truth with authority to gain the respect of our enemies and that act of speaking truth to power and truth to each other is the first step in what is so essential and so necessary. Marie Curie told us you can't hope to build a better world without improving the individual. To that end each of us must work for their own improvement and at the same time share a general responsibility for all humanity. It is that responsibility that brings us together tonight. To say no to this insanity, this depravity, this fallacy, this vanity. With that said, I welcome you to our funeral march. There is a cold breeze that blows on the day of any funeral. Despite the unusual weather of today, these gathering clouds seem so suitable to pass a few words amongst friends about what is most beautiful. In this life we have been given, this fleeting moment that passes in the click of a lens, the flick of a pen, the residual dent left in the snow drifts of suspense. Listen as the wind whispers its thoughts and empties its heart of opinions considered too timid to live in this city of yours, this city of industry, this belly of the beast, this bellicose belladrome wheeling round smoke signals of disease. Forgive my anger, but do not try to contain my rage. I will bury friends within this coffin, and each of you will say the same. Forgive my hard way of speaking, but don't question the sincerity of the words. I stand by each of them to the end and accept any penalty to be served. All cultures will be consumed in the sands of our decay, many more important than the one that dominates today. We must become conductors of the storm, not satisfied with just weathering the rain, dreamers for a future we wish to celebrate today, and leaders of the struggle against the enemies of change, our fight against the lies that these idiots have spun. Heed the rebellion on the tip of my tongue. All that we purport to carry in this coffin is not dead. This is a funeral for the future, a marker in this moment for the path that we tread. But do not think we do not see the foundations of history paving the road at our feet. Dominations define what a nation must be to succeed. And that is our shame to keep. The current turning of the wheel, the grinding bones of the South, the screams of its victims caught in the smoke that it spouts, in the waves of its expansion across the seas of our denial, the face of our fate, sells us deceit with a smile. We are seven billion souls on a ghost train to nowhere without the sense to guide ourselves not to go there. Oh, what we have achieved in our phenomenal fame to have our name embossed on top of a geological age. We are not in a dream. You and I are the first generations of the Anthropocene. 3.7 billion years of life on this planet forged through evolution. Two million years of bipedal people walking the globe in perpetual movement. 250 years of industrial revolution and the forecast is that in 11 years we will have left it all in ruins. If we are the height of organic development, when do we separate from the blueprint? What concrete pedestal will we use to elevate that illusion that everything we see and touch was destined for humans? 
Our skyscape dreams demonstrate the confusion. The building a concrete stairway to the stars is seen as a testament to improvement, but the distance between us and the world won't stop the earth beneath us moving. It's time to smell the coffee that our soils can barely keep producing. As the orchestra of nature falls silent, it is time to face the music. I found a delightful quote from Marie Curie that says, Nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. But what is to be understood of the fear that finds us all as we near death? Certainly it's a true honour to speak to you all. And to hope you understand my fear, that we will not be in time to save everything that we hold dear. But that fear must fuel our fight, and the time for that fight is here, because we stand on the side of science, dream is caught in the fading light of dusk. That we must find the rebel deep inside, that rebel that lives inside of all of us. To stand side by side and say, enough is enough. There are circular motions in this thing called time. And there is a purpose to your existence that only you can find. Love only makes sense once the heart's been tarnished, and there's colours in the shadows only seen by the artist, and drips upon the pain each by the ones who dare to try. A bird only knows itself once it begins to fly. Ask yourself the question, what does your heart wish? To spend your life by the sea throwing back the starfish, in the knowledge that the beaches will always be supplied by creatures that need saving by you and your kind. Educate yourself beyond the cuts of a sharp wit. Money provides a leg up, it's not a weapon to be armed with. Because money makes this world go round, at least in vice, but can't teach you empathy or when it's right to fight. So question your tools and the skills that you half miss. Fighting fire with fire only fuels the arsonist. Who do you think about in the calm of the night? When there's a flame in your mind burning bright, are they a positive force or a personal arsonist? Taking everything and never giving back half of it, the pressures can get heavy in this game of dice. So beware the hooded gambler who wants to raise the price. Put a mirror to your morals and reflect on the hardship. There is a lesson to be learned in how the other half live. Open your eyes to the words of the wise, rather than sitting transfixed by an idiot's advice, or the common take stoking fear with a hard fist. Your senses should be alert to the fact they're alarmists. But the danger is real, and that's why we need to unite and put a dagger through the heart of this media hype. The churning of lies is enough to feel carsick. Hearing up the change is an idea I can't shift. Sitting contemplating my strength for the fight, the exact same power that compels me to write, and channel all my rage into a sense of calmness. Progress towards goals is something we can't risk. That's why I practice what I preach to keep the theory alive until the society of the future is materialized. Not one with billionaires escaping on starships to make war, to colonize Mars and make war with the Daleks. We live on a planet that has allowed us to thrive. To let this bounty perish is to abandon the hive. That final brush with death is the one we're all tarred with. There is disorder in the water while we die with parched lips. So summon up the courage to ask the question of why and ride the wave of your conscience in a sensuous high. The erosion of humanity is just an artifice that exposes the vanity of each and every narcissist. A road well trodden means you kept to the signs. But if your life is directed, what's left to decide? Don't treat your time on this earth with the respect of a half-wit. Otherwise, somebody else will scribe your heart's quips and write cues for you that mean you can never go high. Or walk in the footsteps of an elephant stride. Every muscle, every sinew, from your bones to your cartilage. The passion in your body exploding when the heart sings. I am calm of flesh and destined to die. If I have to meet death, I want to remember this ride. You can be a cog in this system, or uplift your conscience with cognitive wisdom. Run now, my rebels. There is work to be done. In the fields and the meadows, in the streets and the ghettos, in the barrios, the boulevards, the factories, the slums. And remember, there is little to lose when there is a world to be won. We must hold dear the lessons that we have learned, and remember the abundance we have not, and laugh at the old ways of living before consumption levels drop, and production becomes the best of what we need, not a reflection of what we want. If something is worth fighting for, what is the benefit of lessening the cost? I speak these words to myself, in the hope I heard the lesson, and didn't miss the message, 
contained in every grain of sand moved by footprints in the desert, because for each of us now, there is world work to be done, and little to lose when there is a world to be won. In love and in rage, thank you.